Hi YouTube, welcome back to Linda's Pantry and for the second time in a week I have some more beef to cut up. So let me grab some gloves and we'll get moving. I actually should have had these out already but you know me, I'm not, I'm not always as prepared as I should be. I could not resist 217 a pound and I did to almost 20 pounds of grind meat that I canned but because this is really I'm telling you this is my favorite canned meat so far I haven't I haven't figured out um, how to do the other ones so I like them as well but this is amazing and really all I'm gonna do is trim up some of the excess but because what I'm gonna do with this today is I am going to can this for stew meat slash um, let's say I want to do barbecue beef chunks you know that kind of thing that's what I'm doing so I'm gonna cube this meat up and so I don't need all this fat on here I don't mind some of it but I don't want all of it and I can tell you my dogs want all of it <laughs> So I'm just going to trim that off with this fillet knife and let me get this popping and chopping. Okay. Yeah, like this here, sorry, this here, that's too much fat. I don't mind on this. Um, actually, this application can have a little sinew or, and or gristle because during the cooking process, it is definitely going to break down. So... Aren't these beautiful? Just, there's really not that much waste in it. None, nothing's going to go to waste because I'm going to put this in a pot for my dogs with a pot of brown rice and some veggies to go over their food. Um, I quite often do this with any of this. Well, I do it every time with any of the scraps of the deer meat or elk meat or anything that we might get. Um, I don't ever throw it away. I cook it down for the dogs. I package it up in freezer packages, market dog, and I know what it is. And it smells when it's cooking. It smells just like I'm making dinner. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Anyway, so that's as, that's really all I want off of there. Um, I'm so blessed to be able to get this sale price. It, it's just a rarity anymore. And see, there's nothing hardly on the back side of this. I'm happy that I'm not having to waste anything. The grind meat, I had to cut off quite a bit. So let me grab a little baggie to put that in. And I don't know, I guess I was expecting more. So I had a pot back there all ready to go and I didn't even need it. So I'm just going to open up a little sandwich baggie and I'll put this in the fridge and cook. let this simmer on the stove tomorrow while I'm canning. So I'm getting ready to can this for tomorrow and um, that'll be my canning project for the week. I only, I try to only can, you know, like once a week, um, unless it's jellies. Jellies and stuff like that, sauces that you cook really quickly on the stove, they're, they're pretty easy. So, and they go really fast, they're just water bath canned. So here we go, I'm going to put this away. And I'm going to show you the size of meat chunk kind of thing that I want. I'm hoping that I get eight pints of meat. Now I'm a left, I'm a lefty, <laughs> and so um, sometimes you can't always see what I'm doing. But I guess I could put the camera on the other side. Kind of weird. I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside. I got a couple slices, they're about an inch thick. And it's got really nice marbling through here. It's gonna be delicious. So what I wanna do, cause I'm gonna brown this. So I want like stew meat size pieces. Um, like you would, when you buy stew meat, it's kind of in big chunks. Um, I'm gonna sear this first tomorrow and then put it in the canning jars with some hot 
bouillon. And so I really want pretty good sized chunks. There. We're gonna can stew meat and I've gotta make some kind of a stock to go down over it. You could just put water, but um, I want it to be flavored when I open the jar. I don't really wanna to have to work that hard. So I've got five cloves of garlic here that I'm just roughly chopping. They, it may or may not end up in the jar, but if it does, it won't matter. It'll end up like butter. In here, I've got about eight cups of beef stock, and I'm putting two cups of burgundy wine in there, which just gives it a really rich background. The garlic in there. I'm excited for you guys to see this. This is another um, batch of meat that I got for two seventeen a pound. <clears throat> and so, no waste this time. So these, again, they don't have to be perfect either, but we'll get them small enough so if they do end up in my jars, they won't take up too much room. And this is a sweet white onion, so it's not gonna be too strong either. Kind of a cold and blustery day out there. So this is a good day to be canning. It's always a good day to be canning in my book, but we run out of run out of things to can or room to put the can kits for sure. Alright, so now I want to add about I've got about a tablespoon and a half of black cracked. I'm gonna put a tablespoon down. I don't want to put any salt, there's salt in the stock. I'm gonna put a couple good shakes, three, four shakes of Worcestershire in there, and kitchen bouquet. Now I buy this in 32 ounces. It's about seven, I think it's 7.49 for this. If you buy the little two ounce one, they can get, it could get pretty expensive. So I just buy the big one at Smart and Final. And let's see, I wanna measure that out a little bit and this is really for color it does have a nice rich flavor to it I'll put a couple of tablespoons in there yeah oh yeah with the wine and all that it's gonna be gorgeous okay so that's the basis for my um, broth that's gonna go down over that meat I'm gonna give it a quick taste see if I've got everything balanced okay I might need something um, I want to make sure I don't at this point. Taste that. Mm. Um, actually, it needs sugar. <laughs> okay. I'm going to grab some sugar and we'll put that down in there. Brown sugar would be nice. Might put a little molasses in there. It doesn't need much. You just, sugar, you know, it balances out the savory. And grab my molasses real quick and put that in. And then we are ready to get on the meat end of it. And about a tablespoon of molasses. Stir that around again. Rinse my spoon off. Taste it. This needs to cook for about 30 minutes, and it'll be plenty ready when um, when the meat gets done. So I'll have to do the meat in batches. One more taste. That's exactly what it needed. Mmm. You know what though? It does need some time. Oh, you gotta have time with beef, and, and I believe I need some margarine. Yay, okay, where is it? There we go. Just gives it a rich, earthy flavor. So, uh, what I'm gonna do right now is get this meat browning. I've got some olive oil down in this electric skillet. And now I want to get a glove on, because I 
because I don't want to touch it. And I don't want to be in the raw meat batter. So that oil gets nice and hot. You know it's hot when it starts kind of rippling when you move it around. So we're we're hot, and I'm gonna I've cubed up all this meat pretty uniform, like you would buy stew meat, and I'm gonna sear this. I just feel like you get a better texture and better flavor if you get a little. Every bit of flavor you can get in that canning jar is critical to the end result. So I take the extra time in the beginning to make it work for the end result. If that makes sense. And now as we actually get this meat brown, I'm going to get some jars out. I think I can just go right from um, when I get it browned on both sides. I believe I can just pop it right in the jar and go over and get it into uh, the canner. So I'm, I'm going to salt and pepper this just a little bit. Got a fresh cracked pepper. I'll be hand cranking. So while that's browning, I'm gonna let you go do whatever you need to do, and I'll bring you back when I've got a, a little farther along. I've turned the meat down a little bit. It's ready to go in the jars. I just don't want it overpowering noise-wise. So I'm loading this jar. It's been sitting in the hot canner. Keep the jars tempered. Um, and so I'm just going to load up the meat. Turn this down. And if you overcrowd your pan, you'll just kind of steam it. It doesn't really... It's not a huge critical thing, but... If you want that brown flavor and texture, you want to make sure that you don't do that. Okay, i got to get one more jar. Hot. Okay, hot. And we'll put that one right there. This is perfect to fill with the um, stock. And you, you'll want to make sure that you take all the air bubbles out. Nothing trapped inside there. Make sure you can see that well. No, see? I'm too far away or too close. So we're going to, oops, need my, my spout. Put that beautiful stock in there. And you want it within an inch of head space. Um, if you get it too full... You take a chance of it not sealing properly. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's going to be delicious. Okay, so I'm going to wipe the rim down hot and bring this over, put a, a lid and a ring on, and set it back into the hot canner. I just wanted to chat with you a second. So while I'm doing this jar, I am debubbling, which I did with the other jars. Get You'd be surprised where bubbles hide in these. And so you want to make sure you wipe the rim and anything that might get caught up in the mix here. Um, these aren't quite hot enough, so I'm going to dip it right in here. That's what I had to do with the other two. You're just priming the seal. Basically, you're getting that gasket soft. Oh. And... One, just finger tight, and then down into the pan or the rest. And what I wanted to talk to you about is, I just wanted to make sure that it's really clear the way I do things may not be the way the ball canning book says necessarily, but it's what's worked for me for years. It's the way I learned. And I still, I refer back to that book all the time because that is what's going to give you the correct information. That being said, I think that the FDA gets a little bit, um, I don't know, a little overcautious with our regulations. There we go. Look at that. Just resting in there. 
And so it tends to scare people off from possibly becoming a wonderful canner. And so I just don't want some of you out there to be scared or, you know, it, if you're scared, follow the ball, ball canning book. Um, and always, always refer back to that. Don't ever take somebody's word on YouTube, including me. I'm not an expert by any means. I just know what works for us. So I hope this inspires you, you guys. This is fun. It's a great project for a cloudy winter day. It keeps the house warm and cozy and smelling good. And anyway, I'm having fun. All right, so eight pints are in the canner. I'm getting ready to put the lid on. It's going to pressure can at 15 pounds of pressure, and that's because of my altitude, for 75 minutes because they're pints. So that's the setting for meat at my altitude. You check your altitude, and the guidelines are in the ball canning book. All right, you guys. Oh, my gosh. Stocking up the pantry is so much fun. So isn't that nice? Look at that. I have eight pints of... Uh, stew meat right here in a beautiful stock and over there I have round two starting up Now I only had it made a total of 10 pints of the stew beef you know the stew meat and then um, because it was hard for me to just put three <sighs> jars or three pints in that canner and run it for 75 minutes so I actually, we're gonna have cod tonight and you know, the big giant packages from Costco. I pulled out what we're gonna eat and I jarred up two jars, two 12 ounce jars of cod. And you can use it like tuna fish, you can use it in soups or stews, chowder kind of thing, whatever you want, just like any other canned fish. So I decided that's what I was gonna do and we'll see how that comes out and Ah, okay, it was a great day. So 10 pints of stew beef, stew meat for all I gotta do is add carrots, potatoes, some mushrooms. That broth that's in there will make a beautiful gravy. So I hope this inspires you. I hope that you either try to learn how to can or put back food some other way. Um, so just in case something happens, whether it be natural, man-made, unforeseen, um, weather, doesn't matter. Or you have an unexpected guest, you don't know how you're going to add them to your, uh, to your grocery bill. So anything can happen. And I just believe in being prepared and being ready. And this is very rewarding. I hope you try it. I hope you like this. I hope it's inspiring for you. And if you guys want to see anything else on canning, let me know. Oh, do you hear that pop? That's pretty exciting. Um, let me know what you'd like to see, and I'll try to pull it out of my hat if I can. If at all possible, all your requests will be at least visualized in my mind and try to get that to come true for you. Anyway. I can't wait to see you next time. Oh my goodness, we've got good ones coming up. Okay, you guys, God bless.